In the Barbenhausen kingdom, Erin Gerd hones her fencing skills with Kurt. While nearby, artist Kazot sketches the Grand Duchess, while he adjusts a displaced fold in her attire. The Duchess half-jokingly warns him that her husband would behead him for what he's doing. Kazot quits about his artistic mission to immortalize her beauty. Diffusing the tension, however, a sudden kiss ensues, but Kazot retreats, joking that he's quite fond of keeping his head on his shoulders. I'm sure that's not the only head you'd want. Kazot asks the Grand Duchess to sit straight, and Kazot continues to paint. Kazot strolls toward his residence when his landlord intercepts him. Reminding him that his rent is overdue, he proposes to paint her portrait as a form of payment, but she says not in the economy. In his room, Kazot immerses himself in sketching within his notebook. The pages fluttering past a gallery of women he's captured in pencil and ink. Simultaneously, he meticulously mends and stitches his vest, absorbed in his dual acts of creation and repair. Kazot sweeps into the castle, summoned by the Grand Duke and Duchess's invitation. He offers his greetings with a flourish, but the Duke's face creases in confusion. Unsure of who he is, it is the Duchess who refreshes her husband's memory, mentioning Kazot's role as the painter. Seizing the moment, Kazot expresses his hope that the Duke finds the Duchess's portrait to his liking. Wandering over to his displayed work, Kazot observes a nobleman and Aaron Gerd deeply engrossed in his painting. Aaron Gerd comments, a touch of wonder in her voice, on the portrait's likeness to the Grand Duchess. Yet she notes an intriguing disparity that sets it apart. Eager to delve into the subtleties that Aaron Gerd has noticed, Kazot is about to speak when the nobleman interjects, guiding Aaron Gerd away and leaving the painter with his thoughts and the silent whispers of the canvas. Kazot is in the midst of capturing Aaron Gerd from afar with his pencil when the Grand Duchess disrupts his concentration. Her curiosity piqued, she inquires whom his gaze is fixed upon. Upon learning it's Aaron Gerd, she enlightens Kazot with a flourish that the girl is known other than the daughter of her father-in-law's A.D. Camp. Brushing aside any shadow of sadness from Aaron Gerd's earlier remarks about the painting, the Grand Duchess urges Kazot to accompany her. She has someone she desires him to meet. With a gesture that draws the attention of the assembly, she presents her son. Seizing the opportunity to confide in Kazot a pressing need, she reveals the fragility of their position in the line of succession not being direct descendants. Their grip on power is precarious. The gravity of the situation deepens as she discloses the Grand Duke's deteriorating health, an ailment beyond the aid of their physicians. Her son is poised to ascend the throne. Yet without a bride, he cannot claim his inheritance. Kazot queries how he might be of service, and the Grand Duchess confides that though young women are drawn to the prince, he remains disinterested. She imparts to Kazot the urgency. Prince Lothar must find a wife swiftly, lest the throne falls to Count Marbard and Countess Orisla. The Grand Duchess implores Kazot to kindle a passion within her son. Kazot hesitates, claiming incapacity for such a task, but the Grand Duchess is persistent, urging him to set his terms. He proposes his reward, the opportunity to paint Erringerd, leaving the festivities behind. Kazot retreats to solitude where he continues to sketch Erringerd in his notebook. Subsequently, he returns to his quarters, settles his rent, and makes his way back to the castle. In the tranquility of the garden, he encounters Prince Lothar and inquires about the prince's somber mood. The prince confesses his parents' desire for him to wed. Kazot reframes matrimony for the prince, not as confinement but as freedom, and illustrates his point with sketches of nudes from his book. The prince, intrigued, marvels at the drawings, retaining one for himself. Assuring the Grand Duchess of his newly established rapport with the prince, Kazot announces that he has ignited the prince's curiosity. He outlines a plan to venture to Liechtenstein Castle, where he is commissioned to paint a family portrait. Kazot suggests they take the prince along to acquaint him with the daughters of the household. The Grand Duchess is skeptical, noting previous failed attempts with Liechtenstein, but Kazot steers the focus toward Lyudmila, the youngest, on the cusp of her 18th birthday. Kazot and Prince Lothar set off for Liechtenstein, a simple journey under the guise of master and apprentice to avoid the weight of royalty. They reach the castle, their canvas soon holding the family's visage, but it's Lyudmila's image that needs a touch more artistry. She stays behind with Kazot and the prince. As they work, Kazot sprinkles conversations with subtle praises of the prince, planting seeds of admiration. With a discreet exit, Kazot leaves a space for those seeds to sprout. It's not long before Lyudmila and the prince find a connection that pulls them into an inseparable bond. This new love, Kazot shares with the Grand Duchess, igniting her delight. A grateful Grand Duchess offers Kazot payment, but when General Schreckenstein resists the idea of his daughter's portrait, Kazot, a little stung, refuses the gold. Still, an invitation remains, a chance to attend the wedding where Prince Lothar and Lyudmila exchange lifelong vows. In the midst of this joy, Kazot's eyes wander to Erringerd. A silent admiration ensues. Summoned to the palace, Kazot learns of Lyudmila's delicate condition, four months with child. The Grand Duchess confides a pressing concern. The unborn child must not be born out of wedlock, lest Prince Lothar face disinheritance. Kazot proposes secrecy. He advises that the Duke and Duchess announce Lyudmila's pregnancy, attributing her absence to doctor's orders for bed rest. 
Meanwhile, he'll seek out a hidden refuge where Lyudmila can await childbirth unseen. Emerging only six months postpartum, for the princess's well-being, a lady-in-waiting is vital throughout her seclusion. The Grand Duchess chuckles, catching Kazot's unspoken implication Erringerd. Yet as Kazot plots to woo her, the Grand Duchess casts doubt on his ability to charm such a companion. In response, she lays down a playful wager. If Kazot can win over Erringerd, a lifetime position at court awaits him, but should he stumble, he faces a knight with the Grand Duchess herself. At a big meeting, General Schreckenstein, Erringerd, the Grand Duchess, and Kazot talk about making Erringerd the new lady-in-waiting. Thanks to her family's military past, she's a top pick. The general agrees. Erringerd says goodbye to her fiancé, Kurt, and gets ready for the job. Kazot finds a quiet spot in Rosenbad for them to stay. Once there, they bring in Professor Putziger, a doctor, to look after the princess's health. They're also joined by Mr. Podolsky, who's good with horses, and Countess Bargendorf, who will help the princess. When Kazot shows everyone around Rosen Bad, Countess Bargendorf wonders if he's just a helper, but he tells her he's actually the painter. Erringerd thinks she remembers him from before, but he plays it cool. Together, they all welcome the prince and princess to Rosenbad. Kazot tells the Grand Duchess that everything is on track, but he hasn't gotten very far with Erringerd yet. Early one morning, Erringerd asks Kazot if he wants to go horse riding with her. He's not great at riding, but he goes anyway, happy for the time with Erringerd as they take in the fresh morning. When they get back, Mr. Podolsky tells them that Count Marbard and Countess Orisla came by. Kazot tries to say the princess is too sick for visitors, but they don't listen to him. Good thing the prince shows up just then and the visitors decide to leave. Countess Orisla thinks they need to stay close to keep an eye on things. At a local tavern, they pay a server to spy on the prince's place and tell them everything. Kazot goes back to the Grand Duchess to let her know the princess will have the baby soon. He also slips in that he saw Erringerd swimming without any clothes and drew a picture of her. He surprises Erringerd later by bringing her favorite horse, Wotan, to her. While everyone else is taking a break, Erringerd sees her fiancé, Kurt. She says they can't meet now, but she'll explain why later. Princess Ludmilla's baby decides it's time, and she has a healthy boy. They call for the Grand Duchess, and both families come together. The Grand Duchess wants to know if Kazot is getting any closer to Erringerd, but he's not rushing it. She has to leave early because the Marbards are giving her a hard time. She tells everyone to keep the baby a secret. Kazot says they found Lisbeth, a local woman, to be the baby's wet nurse. He brings Lisbeth over to stay with them, but her husband isn't happy about moving. The Marbards show up at Rosenbad again, and they hear about the baby from Lisbeth's husband, Matthias. Countess Orisla tells Matthias if he gets the baby for them, they'll bring his wife back. Kazot keeps drawing pictures of Erringerd while she's swimming. When Erringerd catches Kazot on his way back to Rosenbad, she asks to see his art, but he won't show her. They're interrupted by Mr. Polonsky because the Grand Duchess has come over. The Grand Duchess tells Kazot they can't keep saying no to the Mobards. They're going to have a picnic this Sunday and the Mobards will be there. They have to hide Lisbeth and the baby and make Ludmilla look like she's still pregnant. While Kazot talks about how he's trying to get close to Erringerd, she hears everything. He plans to win her over with his portrait of her, but his plan backfires. Erringerd is mad when she finds out. She storms into Kazot's room and finds the naked drawing of herself and his other sketches. This makes Erringerd fuming. Erringerd steps into the forest and meets Matthias. Matthias spills his plan to take the baby and give it to the Mobards the next day, hoping to see Lisbeth again. Erringerd tells him to go ahead with his plan. The next morning, Kazot heads to the lake, but Erringerd isn't there. Feeling let down, he returns to Rosenbad. The picnic is about to start, and they stuff pillows under Ludmilla's dress to make her look pregnant. Erringerd catches up with Kazot and confronts him about the portrait he's been painting of her. She suggests they finish the painting in his room, and tells him to set up the canvas for after lunch. At the picnic, the Grand Duchess welcomes the Mobards. Meanwhile, Matthias sneaks into Rosenbad to snatch the baby. Countess Orisla almost touches Ludmilla's fake belly, but Erringerd quickly distracts her by tossing a drink at Count Mobard. Suddenly, Matthias shows up at the picnic with the baby, Lisbeth right on his heels. Erringerd and Kazot take off after Matthias. The chase leads everyone to the tavern, where Erringerd confronts Matthias. In the heat of the moment, Erringerd is declared the mother and Kazot the father of the child to protect the secret. Kazot pulls out his sketchbook to show his drawing of Erringerd as evidence of their relationship. The Mobards leave in a huff, and Kurt, who has seen the whole scene, challenges Kazot to a duel over the scandal. As the sun rises, Kurt and Kazot face each other in a duel. Kazot, pacing off his steps, accidentally shoots himself. The duel stops at once, and Erringerd rushes to Kurt's side, embracing him. In that moment, Kazot realizes he will never win Erringerd over. The Grand Duchess observes their reunion from a distance. Soon after, the prince and princess hold a christening for their son. Erringerd is honored with a blue ribbon from the Order of St. Stephen, a prestigious award for noble women who serve Barbenhausen well. Kazot, on the other hand, 
doesn't receive any honors. True to the bet he made, Kazot finds himself in the company of the Grand Duchess. Later, Kazot travels to Rome to further his painting skills by creating portraits. While he immerses himself in Roman life, his friends start calling him Casanova as a playful nickname. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.